before you deal with the carburetor, it's all about ignition. I picked up this fast HEI distributor, about 150 bucks from Summit, and I'm not an agent for anybody, but I like this distributor, and the reason I liked it is that it came with a pretty specified set of specifications, it has a good coil in it, and I didn't really care about the ignition module because you pull the module out, I'm just using this HEI for a coil and to trigger the ignition box that I showed you underneath the dash. So I'm going to take the cover off of this distributor and we'll look inside and I'll show you what needs to be done and I'll show you the numbers that I came up with that work for me. So here I've got the um, cap off the distributor and you're looking at the rotor. Now I left the rotor on just for one reason. This is an MSD rotor. MSD makes two different rotors. They make the cheap crappy two-piece ones that have two pieces of metal that make the connection um, and they make this heavy-duty one that you just need to order this one. The other one is junk. This is a much better um, piece and you can see it's just one piece of metal all the way to make the connection and where it comes to the copper it's actually riveted together so good stuff there. Your advance weights spin out as the distributor spins and if you look down here that bottom plate moves, the top plate is actually moving but they come together and you can see that little piece of a cutoff screw there it's there's two holes in the plate and this is just a screw with a tiny little nut on the bottom of it and the screw's been cut off cut it off with a hacksaw, I think I cut this one off with a Dremel, but the screw's been cut off and the key is making the screw just big enough where it limits your advance to what you want. So if I cut this screw back maybe 30 thousandths, I would pick up another two degrees of advance, or if the screw was a little bit bigger, I'd have a little less advance. So that's how you restrict the advance in a GM HEI distributor. It's pretty easy, and I'll dig out a box here that's got one of these cut-off screws in it so you can see what it looks like. But I got it. So here's one of those screws on the left-hand side. It's been cut down. On the left-hand side of that screw, probably close to right, the right-hand side of it probably doesn't give you quite enough advance. Um, the screw on the right hand side here is just one of those 3 16 screws that you grind off the sides on until you get it right and maybe you have to shorten it but a screw like that on the right is what produced the stop that you see there on the left. Here I'll show you what it looks like in this other distributor that I've got just sitting around here. So the screw goes right in there, and then as the distributor, as the weight spin and the distributor advances, it comes up against that screw and stops it. As the weight spin out, it pulls it together and it stops it. So you can see if the fat side was turned around facing the distributor, it's not getting as much advance as when the thin side is facing the distributor and it's pretty tricky 30 thousandths 40 thousandths makes a difference of maybe a degree so you got to play with it but how do you know exactly how much you're getting well you got to measure it in the car and the easiest way to do that is put a heavy set of weight of springs on your distributor and start it up so it doesn't get any advance and then read the balancer and see what you've got. Then take the springs off altogether and start it up and read the balancer again and calculate the difference of what you got from no advance to what you got with full advance with no springs in it then you'll know how much advance is in the distributor. So if you put your screw in and you don't have enough advance and then you go back and you put one it's filed off a little bit more. You just keep going back and checking it. Once you check it for 
the starting point you can just keep going back and checking I got 22 I got 26 I got 24 degrees that's what I want and that's what you get so a little bit of trial and error here if you had a distributor machine you could do it easier but that's the way it works for getting your advanced setup and limited in your distributor so here's the fast HEI distributor and you can see the vacuum advanced canister on the right you put an allen wrench in where that hose goes and you can increase or decrease the pressure in the spring that's in there thereby making the vacuum advance come in faster or slower and then at the back of the vacuum advance canister you can see that black cam shaped piece right in front of those two wires and you adjust that by rotating it and that gives you more or less advance because it limits when that advance comes in here I'm pumping in with a hand pump if that rod moves it moves the mechanism in the distributor well if the high spot of that cam is behind the rod it doesn't go back as far so you have less advance or more advance if the low spot is on there it goes back further on this one I actually made a little white line and I've got it in the middle one and I'm taking five degrees out with that and that works for me I've done this nine times I hope this is in focus it's too close the rest of it comes with the instructions on the distributor it's pretty easy to adjust the vacuum advance it just takes a little allen wrench that goes in the nipple where the hose attaches they tell you how many turns it takes to put in another two four degrees of vacuum advance the key with ignition I told you before I'd like to have it all in about 26 um, hundred rpms I'd like to have a total of 36 degrees when it's all in that could be 26 degrees of mechanical advance and um, 10 degrees of initial advance so then I got 36 degrees when it's all in at 2600 RPMs but if you're running unleaded fuel on the street you want more advance down low so you want more advance at idle and then you want it to go away a little bit and then you want more advance to come back and the way you get more advance at idle is with vacuum advance so if I got 26 degrees and I need 30 degrees I can add four more degrees of vacuum to get my 30 degrees and that vacuum goes away as soon as you step on the gas and open the throttle blades and there's no more vacuum in the intake manifold and there's nothing holding the vacuum on but it's really good to have vacuum on the street it's good to have maybe 50 degrees 52 degrees even a vacuum when you're just cruising down the highway at no load um, that's good for gas mileage um, it keeps everything clean it's just better all the way around so here's the timing on the balancer on my car here's top dead center um, from the factory the notch this is 12 degrees where I set my initial timing with the vacuum disconnected, rotate the distributor until this line is lined up with the pointer on the um, front cover. The next one up is 30 degrees. 30 degrees is where I like to check my timing with the vacuum attached. So with vacuum attached, it's pulling that um, 12 degrees up to 30 degrees and then the next mark here is 36 degrees and that's full mechanical advance with the vacuum disconnected and then the last mark back here is 50 degrees um, it's probably closer to 49 but um, that's full mechanical advance and full vacuum advance going down the highway under no load once you start getting on load you start having less vacuum in the intake manifold and then you're getting um, less advanced but those are the marks on the balancer and if you bring this um, 12 degree mark up to the pointer on the compression stroke then the rotor will be pointing to number one spark plug and I've got a special uh, distributor cap that I've cut a window in and you can line up the rotor with a mark on that cap I'll show that to you now
So here you're lined up with that um, 12 degree mark is lined up with the pointer on the um, timing chain cover and then up here with that cap on the distributor and the cutout window you can see that the mark on the rotor lines up with the mark on the cap. So as long as you put your distributor back in, put this cap on it, line the rotor up with the cap, then um, your timing is right. And I've got this little mark. There you can kind of see it. I put a um, bolt in and cut a notch in the head of the bolt and that points to a little notch on the base of the distributor. And you can see that um, it's pointing to the right spot. And it's lined up up here. And we'll start this thing up and it'll be perfect. That's all I got. What your ignition is get a piece of graph paper down the left hand side run uh, how many degrees of advance on this one I've got 10 20 30 35 degrees across the bottom you got RPMs 1000 2000 3000 RPMs you can break it down put a timing light on your car have somebody sit behind the wheel and bring the RPMs up and make a dot mark down how many degrees of advance you've got at what RPM and eventually you'll come up with a curve you'll plot four or five um, different spots along the line until you get the total advance and you'll see what your ignition curve is and then you can begin to modify that you can begin to change that and that's what I like about that fast um, HEI distributor is that distributor comes with its own sheet that shows you at different RPMs what different combinations of advanced springs um, will give you how many degrees of advance um, on my car, this here, I'm running 26 degrees of mechanical advance in the distributor, and then I've got 10 degrees set on the balancer, so that gives me 36 degrees of total advance between um, where it's set on the balancer plus the mechanical inside the distributor. And then I add another 13 degrees on top of that with vacuum advance. Here's that spec sheet that came with the fast distributor, and at the bottom of it, um, being a computer kind of guy, I typeset um, a little box that has the advance that I wound up with. Um, this is where I want to be, and you can see here um, initial mechanical, how much total timing, and then how much vacuum at different RPMs. Um, I've got this thing set up to run it. So once you get your set up where you want it to be, then you can move on to the carburetor.